Level one, I'm Dr. Jack Lee. And I'm Dr. Kara Martin. We are both research chemists in the local Dayton area. And today, on behalf of the American Chemical Society, Dayton section, we'll show you experiments that you can try at home. Through these experiments, you'll learn about viscoelasticity, an important material property of polymers. When we describe something that's viscoelastic, what does viscoelastic actually mean? So once again, we're going to split a word into two sections, our visco and our elastic side. So visco, this describes the liquid-like properties of a material, while elastic describes the solid-like properties. But wait, can something actually have both the properties of a liquid and a solid at the same time? They can. This behavior comes in many different forms. So let's get into our first experiment. So the first experiment we're going to do today is we're going to be making something called oobleck. For this experiment, we need a few everyday items, which include water, cornstarch, a couple bowls, and maybe some measuring cups if you really want to weigh it out. It's not super important. So we'll simply just put cornstarch in a bowl and then slowly add water over time, in which we'll mix the two ingredients together. So we'll go ahead and add all the water to the bowl and then slowly add cornstarch. And note that as you add more and more cornstarch in, you start noticing a very peculiar behavior as you mix. So as you can see, if you go slowly, you kind of get that fluid-like response. But if you move quickly, it kind of feels like a solid. So, you know, this experiment is a really fun viscoelastic experiment to do at home. You can't really appreciate this without doing it for yourself. And it's a really easy thing. Just a little bit of cornstarch, a little bit of water, and just mix. And immediately, you can see it have this weird kind of behavior. You see how hard I'm hitting this? It's not even splashing on the counter. And it's, not, it's barely sticking to my hand. But if I do slowly, look at that. Now for our third and final experiment, we'll be making some slime. I understand a lot of people in the audience may have made slime before, but for everyone who haven't, Dr. Kara Martin here is gonna go over the ingredients and how to do this. All right, so this is a pretty easy experiment and everything we have here to make slime you can find in your grocery store. So the most important ingredient of slime is gonna be borax. You can find this in the laundry aisle. It's a little bit tough to find, especially amongst all the other laundry detergent, but you can, it's in there. <laughs> and then the next thing you're going to need is your standard uh, school Elmer's glue. Uh, we can have our regular glue here, or we can also get some interesting glue with the glitter in it. And then lastly, we're going to use about one cup of water. All right, so we have our standard water here. Add that in. And stir it up. It's a milky solution. All right. So I think that looks pretty good. All right, and so then we're gonna take our glue, pour it gently into this cup. See here, it flows quite nicely. Not quite like water. So then we're gonna start adding in our water and we're gonna mix it with this wooden stick. So what do you see? What's happening here? It's really clumping up here. It's starting to get a lot more thick. And we can add a little bit more glue to it. So we're actually observing here is a cross-linking reaction. And to explain what's exactly occurring at the molecular level, we're turning it over to our correspondent in the field. All right, hey guys, this is Lisa. So I'm gonna talk about the science of what you just saw. So in our slime experiment, we had some Elmer's glue here, and this is the actual structure. We got some polyvinyl alcohol polymers in there, okay? Then you have your borax. Here's a structure here. It's a sodium chloride salt. Kind of like table salt, sodium chloride. It dissolves in water. So you saw those two mixed together. And what happened is the OH groups here link with the boron groups to cross-link the polymer network. So before, those cooked spaghettis were all loosey-goosey in there. These cross-link it and make it a really rigid structure. So that's why you see it solidified. So there you have it. So, on behalf of the Dayton Section of American Chemical Society, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and participating in today's experiments. If there's any questions regarding today's experiments or any suggestions for future experiments, please contact with the email below. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.